Okay, I want to talk a little bit about your book reviews. I have read through all of your drafts and I wanted to provide some basic comments and maybe go over a couple of the examples that I posted in the book review folder. The main reason is because most of you have written me a book report instead of a book review. And that's really okay because you've never written a review before and your entire uh, schooling has prepared you to analyze and summarize and regurgitate, but not evaluate. And that is the next step and really what we want to do. So we are evaluating this book. Is it good or not? Is it worth reading or not? And why? So you don't need to provide a summary of the entire book. A lot of you have given me four and five paragraphs of just everything that happens. That's great, but I'm not reading your review, your paper, in order to know what happens. I'm reading it to know whether or not I want to read this book. And that's how we have to shift our thinking when it comes to writing a book review. The whole goal is to give the reader a sense of whether or not we should be reading that book. So uh, we should have a strong introductory paragraph that lets us know this is going to be a book review instead of a summary or a book report. It should have evaluative language. This is good, it's amazing, it's wonderful, it's horrible, it's awful, it's just firewood. Um, whatever you want to say is okay, but you have to back that up in your writing by showing examples. So that's where your summary comes in. The summary is providing that supporting details. A lot of you have offered interpretations or analysis. Here's what the book means. Here's what the purpose is. That's all very well and good, but it doesn't tell us whether or not I should read the book. Then that's the next step is he did this really well, and that's why it's a good book. We got to take it to the next step. A lot of your paragraphs, um, this is a very common thing, is you'll have a whole bunch of information at the very end. This shows us that this. Instead, lead with that main idea. What makes this book good is the illustrations. The illustrations are present throughout, uh, well, obviously, present throughout the, uh, the book because it's a graphic memoir, but they show us things that might give us a better understanding. For instance, when they're at the horse stalls, uh, we can see the big pile of poop. I'm trying to go by memory. And the joy and excitement from George and his brother's uh, face while his parents look grumpy and upset and the baby's crying. These are things that add extra detail to George's childlike memory, something like that. Um, there is no need for a number or star ranking because if you say, oh, this is a four out of five, I have no idea what it means. I haven't read any other, other reviews. The last book you might have given a five out of five could have been, you know, Magic Treehouse. Doesn't tell me anything, right? So a number system or a star system is just a waste of time at this point. Um, I have nothing really to compare it to. So just uh, do yourself a favor. Don't worry about it. If you want to say it's a great book, that's fine. But take that number and make it actually mean something. And then finally, your conclusion should have a strong definitive recommendation. So what I'm going to do is if you go to the book review folder, I have some examples, uh, samples uh, of what students have done. So I'm going to look at one and three. Again, these are not templates. Um, so if we look at this for this one, I don't remember which one this is. I think this might be one. Um, now this is three. You do not need this. Do not do this. Um, this is just what a student did to try to help figure out what they're doing, I guess. We have an introduction um, that kind of explains and gives us an overview. That's great. He writes a book to show this. So this is one of those um, statements of purpose or statements of analysis. Timmerman is writing this book to show these things. It's not a review statement. It's not evaluative. We need to know he does this and it's good. He makes his book great. Well, what do I mean by great? Blending personal stories and facts about countries. Let's emphasize the greatness better. So maybe split up these sentences or just work on this. His book is great because he's blending personal stories and facts about countries. 
um, in order to show other things. This is what readers will love. So we have to be careful about what we're trying to say. Make sure you're leading with this evaluative statement and not just a summary or explanatory statement. Here we lead off with this purpose. Okay, that's fine. But how does this help us understand whether or not this is a good book? Here we have, a, you know, a interpretation. Here's how he supported his purpose. Well, that's great. It's not evaluation. Um, next, we just have more summary and more information from the book. We learn a lot of information in the book, but maybe I just want to read the book. I don't know if I do want to read it. The information might help but it also doesn't help a lot either. Really, this is probably what makes the, the book more interesting is learning about this stuff. And now we're finally getting uh, historical information from countries, which is mentioned all the way up here. So imagine being promised this paper is gonna tell you about personal stories and facts about countries and not really getting it until you know the end of the third page. So be very, very careful about what we're doing. And this conclusion just kind of, um, repeats the, the thesis and that that's not a great gimmick to do. Um, example one, I think this is this one um, says similar things as the other version, but through personal experiences and a curious mind, Timmerman creates an amazing book that tells readers many things about garment workers, tough lives and how the consumer and producer chain is what keeps them alive. Okay, that sounds really interesting. Maybe I wanna read this book. So, not as much of an introduction, but a very, very short kind of overview of that encapsulates what, what this book is about. We get his background, what he's trying to do. He concludes to read that if Americans would ever stop buying clothes, it would leave the company out of work. And so this becomes more explanatory. Uh, but here we have this idea. The book is easy to read with these personal stories. If we remove this up and put it here and say the first person he meets is Amilcar that's gonna give us a lot better focus for this paragraph. So this main idea that's linked down here, put it up here. Um, and again, this is good. Let's see. It allows the readers to feel the pain. So again, we have this concluding thought that should begin up here. What makes Timmerman's book is great is that personal connection. Uh, he provides us, the reader, with the people he meets. And then all these things. So provide us that. Um, and so this is this is a decent review, but it does some of the things that I've warned you about. I've read a lot of these reviews. Uh, it's not easy. And, you know, you shouldn't feel like it's, it's easy. It, writing is not easy, but these are things we have to do. We have to learn how to uh, explain whether or not something is good. So Take some of these tips. I hope they are useful for you. Um, look at those examples, read other examples, just like you could Google a review of this book that we're reading, uh, They Called Us Enemy, and see what they're doing. And how does it compare to what you've done? Um, that'll be helpful. Just don't copy, right? You know better. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a good time revising your paper. And if you do have questions, please, please contact me, okay?